Out in space, the Apollo 17 astronauts are spending their last day in the vicinity of the moon. Here's a report on the flight from Roy Neal at Mission Control in Houston. Today was a quiet one for the Apollo 17 astronauts. They're orbiting the moon in their command module America and taking a few pictures. On the moon, some of the explosive charges they left behind go off tonight to create some artificial moon quakes for scientists. Here in Mission Control, the word is that this flight, the last Apollo, is a near-perfect end for the program. These men stayed on the moon longer, traveled farther, picked up more samples, and were more successful than any of the ten men on the moon before them. Of all the science experiments they set out, only one's not working, the lunar surface gravimeter. Their cabins now cram full with about 250 pounds of rocks and soil samples, including some very unusual orange-colored material. Samples said to range in age from the earliest stages of the moon's formation some four billion years ago to some of the most recent, perhaps a billion years old. They will burn out of the moon's orbit and start for home tomorrow evening. Roy Neal, NBC News, in Mission Control. In other news, the Apollo 17 astronauts, who obviously deserved it, had a lazy day today orbiting the moon. The space agency said it was a period of unwinding for Eugene Cernan, Jack Smith, and Ronald Evans. The men went to bed about dawn, slept until early afternoon, and spent the rest of the day in routine checks and experiments. Tomorrow night, they are scheduled to blast out of lunar orbit and start back to Earth. The, the crew of Apollo 17 had a fairly easy day. The two moon explorers, Cernan and Schmidt, pitching in to help Ronald Evans with the pilot's scientific and photographic chores. The command module continues in orbit around the moon for another day. It begins the long trip home tomorrow evening. While the last of this country's manned moon flights approaches the home stretch, American and Soviet scientists were looking to the future. U.S. and Soviet space experts concluded a week of technical talks today on a joint space venture scheduled for 1975. During their meetings, they made the first test of a docking system to be used on that mission. Today, astronaut Ron Evans stepped out of his Apollo 17 spacecraft 180,000 miles from Earth, speed 2,200 miles an hour the final major event before splashdown on the final Apollo flight to the moon. Evans went out to retrieve film canisters from the service module, which will be jettisoned before re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Here's what it looked and sounded like. Okay. Oops, take it off. Okay, can you see him? He's out. Roger. Man, it's black off this other way. The uh, camera lens is all stowed. Okay, the right one's in. And the left one's in. Hey, pretty stable right here. Can I throw with both hands? Hey. Uh, do we see you waving? <laughs> hey, this is great. Talk, talk about being a spaceman. When I let go of that pocket there, I let go with a little bit of a force, and the force has a tendency to throw your feet way up in the air. Okay. Come on, the old cassette. Oh, 
Astronauts Evan, Cernan, and Schmidt are on a perfect course back towards Earth. They will land in the Pacific Ocean on Tuesday. NBC News coverage of that landing will begin at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. The Apollo 17 astronauts speeding toward home this evening held a news conference from their spacecraft, and they were asked what their chief impressions were. CBS will broadcast tomorrow's splashdown and recovery of the Apollo 17 astronauts starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Ford dealers now. The Apollo 17 astronauts, Cernan, Schmidt, and Evans, traveled through space today, headed for splashdown in the Pacific tomorrow afternoon. Scientists said their mission had been so successful, so scientifically sophisticated, that it could produce major revisions in theories about the moon. And this afternoon in space, more than halfway home, the astronauts held a televised press conference. A reporter asked the astronauts whether they felt their flight was the end of the beginning of the space program. Back at the Apollo program, I don't think anyone can uh, privately to themselves or publicly say that this truly, indeed, has really been a beginning, a beginning of man's really first venture out into deep space. And once there's a beginning, uh, there's a continuation. Uh, the, the probing into deep space by man, uh, the next landing on the boat, uh, a trip to Mars may not be for 10 years, a decade, it may not be till the end of the century. But I personally have faith that it will happen. Uh, I think it's a restraint, uh, an abnormal restraint of man's intellect at this point in time uh, to restrict or tend to think that he will restrict his own uh, feeling of exploration, uh, his own quest for knowledge. He's had an opportunity, he's proved that he can take advantage of this opportunity. And I think that the nature of mankind uh, is going to just press on. That's why I believe not uh, we Apollo 17, yes, it's the beginning. Uh, but the whole Apollo program is really the true beginning of what's to come in the future. And I, uh, I firmly believe that we can look back in 100 years or 200 years and uh, the five-year or 10-year uh, period of time that uh, we may be slowed down here. I think we'll be... Uh, will be lost in the merit of what's really accomplished during the next uh, several decades. The next question is for all the crew. The American people seem to be getting fairly blasé about space flight, and television coverage of Apollo 17 has been at a minimum. But this is not the case abroad. For example, in the Republic of Zaire, the former Belgian Congo, an estimated 20 million people are watching extensive coverage on TV sets set up in the villages. What do you have to say to the people of underdeveloped nations? Well, Gordy, uh, first of all, I, uh, I'm not sure that uh, the amount of television coverage is necessarily a measure of the interest of the American 
thousand people. I don't have those figures at hand. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that the uh, adventures we had and the uh, insight that maybe we gained into uh, not only ourselves but to uh, uh, the history of the solar system uh, was not shared extensively with the American people, if that's true. As far as the uh, rest of the world is concerned and also the uh, people uh, of the United States who uh, may not participate as much in the uh, affluence that we all uh, would like to share, I think that what space flight in general and the uh, Apollo program in particular has uh, offered is uh, many new avenues from which we can provide for those people abroad and for our own people the uh, kind of quality of life and, and the material, including the material quality of life that everybody aspires to. Splashdown is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Time, southeast of American Samoa. And NBC News coverage of it begins at 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. Apollo 17's return voyage continued to go smoothly today. The astronauts did some housekeeping in preparation for tomorrow's splashdown. They also held an in-flight news conference. ABC's science editor Jules Bergman reports. Apollo 17 was more than halfway home as the astronauts began their mid-space news conference shortly after scientists declared what the astronauts found could produce major revisions in our theories about the moon. And what they found was the main theme of questions radioed up from newsmen. Uh, and then, uh, possibly as important as any finding, we found that uh, even later than that uh, relatively young light mantle deposit or uh, avalanche, possible avalanche, we have alteration, reminiscent of the alteration by hot waters or hot gases on Earth. And that was the orange, uh, appears to be the orange soil that we found around the crater Shorty. And uh, subsequently in orbit, we started to pick up and uh, particularly through uh, Ron Evans' uh, efforts, pick up more uh, and more of the apparent uh, evidence of such alteration taking place in fairly recent time on the moon. Uh, all of those uh, items, uh, I think, are extremely significant and go through the full range of our present uh, knowledge of lunar history. And uh, a report I would write would uh, initially summarize that particular uh, sequence of events. All is going smoothly tonight towards splashdown tomorrow at 2.24 p.m. Eastern Time. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News. ABC's coverage of tomorrow's splashdown begins at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central Time.